Hey Vault Hunters, Stud Doogie coming at you with a uh, another build video. So what's going on here is uh, yesterday I did a challenge run of um, Circle of Slaughter. Uh, I got into a conversation with someone on the uh, official Gearbox forums and um, it kind of turned into a challenge to do Circle of Slaughter without using the barrier. Uh, so I can kind of feel the full effects of the ghosts. And so this was the build that I put together and I did the video and I uploaded it to YouTube as evidence that it was done. But I didn't really go into detail about the build uh, because I knew the video was going to be long and I didn't want to spend another 20 minutes uh, just talking about the build. So it was kind of just kind of, kind of a cursory overview. But in this video I'm going to spend the time to uh, go and talk about the build in detail in large part because I got a message on Reddit from someone who's having um, some trouble with Zane and one of the issues that keep coming up on the forum is people think Zane is weak and as someone who thought Zane was weak but then realized that it wasn't Zane that is weak is that I just there was so much I didn't know there were little interactions little things that you need to keep uh, in mind strategy strategies that you should be employing while playing and all a host of these types of things there when you that when you understand it and you utilize it Zane is quite effective now that's not to say to say Zane is overpowered or Zane is the strongest vault hunter because he is not in just pure raw damage numbers um, he does not out damage say Amara with a 300 gun damage anointment right or or flack with his ridiculous crit bonuses so this is not some absolute declaration of Zane's supremacy it's more of you can do all the endgame content with Zane if you're having problems hopefully you can find some resources that explain things in different ways instead of talking about OP builds kind of more go into the nitty-gritty and strategies and that's what I'm gonna try to do with the content that I do going forward so let's get into the build um, I will link the playthrough and for Circle of Slaughter in the description so you can see how uh, how I utilize the things I'm about to discuss okay so the center of the build the centerpiece of the build is this gun it's the Dastardly Maggie and the specific anointment on this one is um, weapon damage increased by 130% for a short time. Now, you don't have to use this gun. As I've said in previous videos, I, I do my builds around the weapons that I have and, and not that I try to farm a weapon to do a build. So I happen to have this weapon and I was challenged to do a clone build so I used it and I crafted uh, a build based on it. Uh, if you don't have this gun and you want to get it and you're on Epic, you can just send me a friend request, leave a comment uh, in this video so I know that it's you and not some weird stalker um, and I will happily send you a copy of it. Uh, otherwise, if you're not on the on uh, PC, I recommend that you go to the official Gearbox software forum uh, there, there are pages there dedicated to trading for each of the platforms on this game, so PS4, Xbox, and PC, and um, you know people are happy to trade with you and send you stuff if you really want this gun. Otherwise, uh, good luck farming it, because um, maybe you'll just get lucky like I did. Okay, so again, the whole play loop is about swapping with my Digi clone so that I can get the increased gun damage. The next gun in the kit is a Trevenator that has shock and corrosive and that is to deal with uh, the turrets that pop up in Circle of Slaughter. In the actual build video you see two other guns here but I don't actually use them so I don't want to clutter the screen with useless things so I've just left them out. Uh, another useful piece of gear is the Transformer and in this instance I have one that is Terror Anointed. And that's important because the whole point of the challenge was to 
in my estimation, I don't think the ghosts are as bad as some of the people on the forums are making them out to be. And that was my basic contention that eh, they're not that bad. Um, and so I use terror anointed weapons so that I get the benefits of terror and none of the downsides. Now, here's the thing about terror anointments or the terror debuff. In order to not suffer the negative effects of terror, you need to have terror anointed gear that is active. Okay, what do I mean by active? Let's take a gun, for example. The Maggie has no terror anointments. If I have the Maggie in my hand, when a ghost hits me, or if I have another piece of terror anointed gear, let's say a piece of gear where when I melee some melee an enemy, uh, I get a 30% chance of terror, or if I have a piece of gear where when action skill ends, it gives me terror for 18 seconds. If any source of terror is being applied, when I have the Maggie in hand, I will be negatively affected because it's not a terror anointed piece of gear. It's, in other words, it's not active. But if I have this in my hand, when terror gets applied to me, because it's active, it nullifies the negative effect. So for guns, it has to be in your hand. But for shields, shields are always active. So if you have a shield on that's terror anointed, it automatically nullifies the negative effects, negative effects of terror because shields are always active. Okay, so that's why I'm wearing this. Plus the transformer is simply one of the best shields in the game, um, bar none. And you'll see me actually utilize the fact that the transformer is 100% shock resistance and that it converts 100% of shock into shields because there's this one instance where I'm fighting a group of enemies uh, and there's a badass there and I don't kill the badass. I leave him, I leave one of them up, the one that is shooting cr um, shock at me because he's just keeping me alive so I can focus down his friends, kill everybody and then once everyone is dead then I kill him. So the transformer is really really one of the best shields in the game and if you want more in-depth uh, coverage over the uh, Transformer Thick Fella uh, recently posted a video which I'll probably link in the description so you can get more details about uh, the Transformer. I'm um, using a recurring hex that is Cryo. Uh, this is important. Uh, I'm using it to freeze enemies. So this is more of a defensive strategy than an offensive one. Um, if enemies are frozen, then they're not shooting at you, so that's less incoming damage, allowing your shields to heal, allowing you to do damage without taking damage, etc. So, for me, I primarily use grenades in a defensive capacity. Um, There's some exceptions where I use an offensive capacity, and you will see that um, in the playthrough, and specifically this grenade, the It's Piss, one of my favorite grenades. Uh, it's just a flat 20% damage debuff against an enemy so it's fantastic for 1v1ing anointeds and uh, again if you want this it's easy to farm it's just one source in uh, I can't remember the name of the place but it's an easy to farm source and but if you want it and you're on PC I will happily send it to you okay the other piece of gear is this executor class mod and there are two really crucial pieces uh, or two really crucial perks that, I'm, that I want to utilize and that affects the actual build. Because remember, my build approach is optimizing based on gear. So this one has 20% reload speed and 36% shield recharge rate. Then on top of that, we get the extra bonus of 45% uh, critical damage for Jacobs. And because it's an executor, we get, I think it's an additional 16% critical damage uh, when we kill something and the increase in accuracy the increase in handling is really really useful for the Maggie because the Maggie is uh, not a very accurate weapon it's only 33 percent which is actually crappy so um, being able to get increased accuracy increased handling is really useful and you will see me utilize that quite effectively a lot of the times also, the status effect damage and the status effect chance improves the effectiveness of the hex. So, because um, it's a cryo, so it applies cryo status effect, which is to slow and freeze enemies. So it becomes better at freezing enemies. Um, and the cryo dot, which is that lot, a lot, helps us to uh, kill enemies. And last but not least, 
we have a icebreaker victory rush again we're going to be freezing enemies so we want that 35 percent damage bonus we love the 50 percent cryo increase uh, cryo efficiency increase um, because it allows us to more effectively freeze um, circle of slaughter is chock full of badasses so a victory rush is going to give us that additional 18 percent damage but more importantly 18 percent movement speed so we're going to be leveraging the movement speed as for the other perks cryo efficiency more is always better because you freeze faster and 16 percent cryo damage is nothing to sneeze at okay so that's the gear and now let's do a build that synergizes with that gear so i'm going to start in this tree because it's the tree uh, that has less, the one that we use the less. Um, so the most important skills in this tree that we want for our build is salvation and death follows close. So um, we're going to put three points here and two points here. Now I talk a lot about movement speed, so why only two points in movement speed? Well when we get down here it's going to boost this 8% to 32%, right? Because we get 25%, uh, 33%, I'm sorry, 25 plus 8 is 33. And we get 8% movement speed here, so um, that's going to be 33%. And on top of that, we now we have 18% from our victory rush whenever we kill a badass. And since the uh, circle of slaughter or the slaughter shaft is filled with badasses we're pretty much going to have that on all the time so we don't need to spend any more points for movement speed because you know there, as long as you move fast enough that's what you need because we're not really using the movement speed to gain uh, a damage buff we're using it as a defensive slash offensive mechanic and you will see in the gameplay and I'll also explain it when I get into talking about the clone what I mean by that. So we just need enough to get down to the next level to get what we really want which is salvation because this is our primary source of healing and this is probably my, again I've said this before, it's my favorite skill um, because it's just a flat 25% bonus to all your kill skills and 25% is, a, is an increase that you can feel. Plus it doubles kill skill duration so what's not to love about this skill now we're going to put only one point here which is a deviation for me because I normally like a lot of reload speed because reload speed is DPS the less time you spend reloading the more time you're spending shooting which means more DPS but because we're using this comm that's providing 20 percent we don't need to spend a lot of points in this tree Additionally, we don't actually have the points to spend because we need to get all the way down to here in this tree. In this tree. So therefore, we have to be stingy in all the other trees so that we can get down to this skill in this tree. So um, by utilizing that comm that increases reload speed, it means we don't have to spend a lot of points to get reload speed. And the reload speed, you know, it's 25% plus two and a half. Uh, well, 2.9, let's call it 3%. So that's 28% reload speed on top of the 20% from the comm. So that's 48% reload speed, which is almost 50%, almost half. So that's pretty darn good for one point. Okay, so that's the end of this tree. And now we're going to go into the barrier tree. The most important skill in the barrier tree that we want is this one. You know, what? I'm going to save the barrier tree for last and go down here. So five points here because it's synchronicity. That's flat 20%. This is not going to be a dual action skill build. We're going to use uh, one action skill so we have access to our grenades um, because we don't have the tankiness from the barrier. So we need to be able to control the battlefield by spamming grenades to freeze things. And we can't depend on the RNG and the low um, frequency of drops that we get from this skill and uh, drops from this is basically RNG because it says it's a chance kill an enemy with a clone gives that clone a chance it doesn't guarantee that every kill it's going to throw one so basically that's RNG and we don't want to depend on RNG for survivability which is why we're using a, uh, a single action skill 
So we're five points in the Donnie Book because we need to get down the tree and more damage is good for us. And Donnie Book synergizes nicely. Why do I keep going in the wrong direction? Donnie Book synergizes nicely with um, Death Follows Close because it's going to get increased by 25% and uh, it's a like duration doubled. Um, we're going to put three points here because it's going to increase the magazine size for Maggie from 9 to 11 shots. Those two 11 shots make a difference because if you're in fight for your life and you're about to die, it's good to have two more in the mag than having to reload. And plus we need to get down the tree anyway. And we don't need this skill for um, our clone because we're going to get duration here right so we actually get more duration by going down here than we would get here and again this is more beneficial to us because we get more dps because we're reloading less this of course is just free grenades we're going to be spamming grenades but there's no reason not to have the clone spam grenades too and since we're using a homing grenade we don't have to worry about him screwing it up Again, we need to get down the tree, so we are going to uh, click on this one. It It's useful, but kind of useless because the AI in this game is designed to target you more than it targets the clone. So even when you swap and your shield starts recharging, chances are it's going to be interrupted by enemy fire because you're going to be targeted. But it's we need to get down the tree, and it's useful because sometimes they don't target you, and it helps your shield comes back faster. We're going to put three points here because we are not using uh, my big boom blaster build. And in that build, the big boom blaster drops boosters that replenishes our grenades. So since we don't have an external source to replenish grenades, we have to generate them ourselves. So we're going to put a full three points into this skill. This skill is buggy. Um, don't pick it. It doesn't always work. I did a, a bug video that I sent to Gearbox about it. Hopefully they'll fix it. So we're going to put two points in here for more movement speed. And so you combine the eight points and uh, you combine it with this plus the 18 points from the comm and we have a lot of movement speed. So, you know, so this allowed us to be really efficient in how we spend points here. We didn't have to fill any of these up and we could focus on the points that we really needed and just drop a couple points and get a lot of benefit from them because of the the gear that we have uh, specifically the calm okay so this is the most important skill and we're going to stop here uh, in this tree we don't need to go any further we're not using the clone to do damage so we don't need to go here even though when you swap with your clone you get an additional 20 percent damage our Maggie is giving us 130% damage on swap. So we don't need more DPS. What we need is survivability, and which is we're, why we're going into the barrier tree. So we're going to put, the most important is this one right here um, for survivability. And you'll see that actually play itself out in the gameplay, but we need to get down here first. So we're gonna put five points here for action skills cooldown. This is not a um, uh, uh, Calm Cool Collected build. So we cannot use Calm Cool Collected to keep or clone up. So it's going to go down and when it goes down, we need to get it back as fast as possible because in the absence of the clone, our damage drops dramatically because there we can't utilize the anointment. So this is really important for getting our, uh, our skill back up, our clone back up quickly. We're going to put five points here because, again, crap, it's not five points, it's supposed to be four. Um, we're putting four points. Five here. Four here. So that we get more shield recharge rate, more shield recharge delay. Remember, we don't have a big boom blaster dropping boosters to restore our shields by 60%. So we have to do it the old-fashioned way. So shield recharge delay and shield recharge rate, really useful when you're dealing with a shield like a transformer, a high-capacity shield. Because high-capacity shields take longer to recharge, so by increasing their recharge rate, um, they become more effective for us. 
we want a full five points here because uh, shooting enemies stops them from shooting us. Um, brain freeze just procs stops a badass from filling our heads with rockets. And since we are in this tree, we might as well get the gun damage of 20% and an accuracy increase of 33%. So Maggie has very low accuracy. This helps it a lot. And when you pair it with the comm, which increases accuracy and handling, it's even more impressive. You'll see that the Maggie's reticle becomes smaller than a sniper rifle in some of the gameplay. That's how accurate the combination of an executor comm with this skill turns a low accuracy, a low accuracy gun into a very, very lethal sniper rifle-like gun. Um, okay, so uh, let me redo this. Um, these are the augments that I use in the gameplay footage. The most important one, of course, is this because it allows me to recall my clone, which can reduce its cooldown based upon how much time it has left. Uh, so this is a really useful skill. This has its utility. Um, it's not crucial, but it does help because it will restore parts of your shield, which of course means that this becomes more effective and this remains effective. So it may not be a lot, but it is useful. Um, so that about covers it. That, that ends what I have to say about the build. Um, if you have any questions about or want more details about the choices that I've made, uh, you can leave it in the comments and I will respond. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. And uh, the live commentary, the sound quality is really low. I was listening back to it and I realized how low it was. Um, sorry about that. Uh, but there are some useful tidbits, I think in terms of how to engage enemies and target priority and techniques that I use, especially there's a, a cool one someone pointed out to me uh, that they appreciated, which is to aggro um, Goliath to do work for you. So you'll see me utilize that, that strategy um, in the video, not just in this one, but in other ones that I've posted, because it's a useful strategy in, in Slaughter Shaft. All right, y'all, I hope this information has been useful. Uh, please don't rate, comment if you have questions, and definitely don't sub subscribe unless you like this kind of stuff. I'm not going to be producing, like, ridiculous daily content or anything like that, but, um, you know, as people ask questions and stuff come up on the forum, um, using YouTube as a way to answer those questions and to discuss Borderlands 3 is, I find that uh, useful and practical. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy.